<laughs> you came in right on time. I'm like, where is Peter? You supposed to be here a long time ago. What did I do? Hi. Well, how you doing? I'm good. You doing good? How are you? I'm fine. How you doing? Like your ponytail, you rock, you rocking that ponytail and that tight, you know, like pull back right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's what thank you. You know, I lost a little bit of weight. You know, I'm working on things, trying to be yeah, a better yeah. me. Yes, yes, yes. I see, I see your skin. You shining. Ooh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's what's up. Look at Peter. Peter, we miss you. <laughs> How you doing? Happy bro? belated birthday, by the way. How old thank is you? You is old. How old? Is you? Yo, look, I'm father time. Look at all of this, you know. Peter's birthday was, what was your, October 2nd? When was your birthday? October 1st. October 1st. Okay. Yeah. It was one of Because I Sunday. called you on that day for something else. Yeah. And then you was acting out flip it. Today was my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my football day. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what, what are y'all talking um, about? We ain't talking about that. I was talking about Nene coming back to YouTube and how I feel like she needs to find her own voice and do what everybody else does. Like, I feel like everybody, I don't know if you want to get in this, but I feel like everybody use her name for clicks. Everybody. Like, you yeah, know what well, I'm saying? Everybody builds up their platform with Nene. Let me invite Nene on here and I can get me a million views. Or let me invite Nene on my podcast. I can give you a million views. And it's like, girl, do your own show. Yeah, I, I've been telling her that. Um, you know, like everybody would tune in. Like even, even the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. Just recapping the show that, you know, she's definitely the matriarch for. Um, just her recapping it every week. People would tune in to see who she's hating and who she's congratulating. You know what I'm saying? And who she's throwing shade at. It would yeah, be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, she would, would get be, a million subscribers in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, girl, that, just keep that, doing it. Yeah, that would be more interesting than the fucking show itself. You know what I'm mm -hmm, saying? Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I think people, it will definitely show her power. Yeah, you know, saying? So, you know, I'm encouraging to do it. I don't even care if it's on your phone first. Like I said, everybody starts at zero, and I know she don't want to start at zero. <laughs> she want to come in with lights, camera, action, cameraman. I was just like, just record stuff. It don't even matter what it is. Just record. Well, I mean, everybody got to start somewhere. Somebody need to tell her that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so what's up? Look um, at you. You, I'm waiting on you. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Peter Thomas. When you coming back? When you doing, you know, what you supposed to be doing? I need to come back to bar one and give me some more snapper and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to hold on. Um, You're holding on, Peter. I'm holding on. I mean, you know, um, Miami Beach has been five years now that I have that lease. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going through some stuff with the people in the condo association. They're really on some real super, super racist shit. You know, they just removed my planters from in front of my restaurant for no reason because they said... In my what? In, in, in my Miami head? Beach, yeah. They, they, they take a fork, forklift last Thursday, pull up in front of my restaurant, pick up those three planters, bring it two blocks away, put it in the back of one of their building and say, when I'm ready for them, I could pick it up. I said, why the fuck you touch my planters? They're like, well, you didn't ask us permission to put them here. I said, they've been there for four fucking years. Oh, so what are wow. you talking about? It's a walkway because my front door is recessed like 40 feet from the street. You know what I'm saying? So, and they refused to turn on the floodlight to, to light that area up. You know, um, I, and I keep on saying this to everybody, Miami Beach is racist. Not even 3% of all of Miami Beach is African-American, mm -hmm. you know, and I keep on telling people over and over that, you know, that city, Miami Beach, was created in 1915, and up until 1973, they didn't allow us over there without a pass crossing the bridge. That's 57 years. Now, those same fucking people are still there. And because they're putting up a brand new condo across the street from my restaurant, which is going to be the tallest building on South Beach, they're selling unit in that building, 800 square foot, starting at $1.2 million. The white, oh, wow. people are, the white people are in my building, which is like 99% white. Mm -hmm. 
think that because there's a Black-owned restaurant, Black-operated restaurant, Black-attended restaurant downstairs, they're losing probably traction on their property value when it have only went up uh, 60% in the last two years. You know, they just hate us. They just wow. hate us because we're Black. I absolutely mm. have no violations. I absolutely have n no noise complaint, no tickets for anything. And um, the code enforcement come all the time and like, I don't know why these people in the building keep on calling us, Peter. You know what I'm saying? I said, well, maybe y'all should, you know, you know, put out an harassment and fucking charge on them. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, they're desperately trying to get us out of there that they could have their own kind downstairs because, you know, white people don't like to patronize black-owned establishment. They really mm -hmm. don't, to be honest with you. Can you tell me the story about how, you know, like, somebody will come in, like, white people come to... To the establishment and they'll see that it's like a lot of black patrons and they'll leave or something yeah yeah the, you know they the, the cool one want to hang up because they want to fuck with us but mm. nine out of ten of them is going to leave mm. you know what i'm saying wow. we're not built like them we're really uh, uh we're really god's you know children because we have no problem Supporting everybody else's shit. <laughs> and I'm saying we, we're the one. Mm -hmm. Everybody, they want, yeah, designer they stuff, support. everything. Yeah, they, they won't support us at all. We keep them rich. They don't give a shit about us. That's on some real shit. Well, you, what, do you, what happened? Is Baltimore still around? Uh nah. Let me tell you something. I have a, the, the the landlord up there. I put a lot of money into Baltimore, but the landlord up there want us there. It's just that on some. Just to give you give it to you one hundred percent, Baltimore did three million dollars in sales the first year. Baltimore is a restaurant that could literally do around seven million dollars a year. But I opened Baltimore restaurant one year of my father uh death anniversary. My father died um December ninth, twenty twenty. Uh that's around when I'd signed the lease for Baltimore and then my when I open it, just it just not that I time it to be like that. It just opened on that day, and to be honest with you, I was in a. I don't, you know, we don't have no partners up there. So when you don't have no partners, you're only accountable to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know that I was going through a depression. You know what I'm saying? Because my father been with me my entire life. He's mm -hmm. been my guide. So, you know, me flying all the time and I'm in the airport just several times. I'm just waiting on the flight and I'm sitting there and and I just start bawling and got emotional and people coming up to me, looking at me like, oh, shit, what's wrong with you, Peter? It's the worst thing when people know you are and you're embarrassed as fuck. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And and that happened so many times in the last three years because I'm going on three years of him dying where mm -hmm. I just didn't have the energy uh, to or, or wasn't motivated to to do anything. You know what I'm saying? So I pretty much let go, to be honest with you. You know, and, you know, being, you know, coming back to Atlanta, uh, because my main resident is in Miami, but coming back to Atlanta after my dad died, just to be closer to my mom, because that's one of the, the promise that I that I made him. He came to my restaurant for the first time ever, uh, two and a half weeks before he passed away. He wasn't even supposed to travel. As a matter of fact, when he walked in and he was trying to walk in the door, he started you know, where they have to catch him, you know what I'm saying? And then that weekend was so crazy because the weekend was, there was a tropical storm. So we were, and I'd lived on the 46th floor. So we were like in the, the, the condo building swaying and, you know, he gets to really spend time for two days just talking to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then when he died, I, I couldn't pass that room to go to my bedroom anymore. So I got rid of that unit. And I didn't know, I thought I was just like trying to keep busy, trying to do things, you know. Um, and I was fucking depressed. 
you know, and and I just let go. I let go a lot of stuff in my life. I, you know, I just I just didn't care, and I didn't know consciously. I didn't know I was doing it while I was doing it. You know, until you had to manage all of that stuff on top of the on top of the loss in his heart. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so I put myself in a situation with Baltimore where. You know, in order for me to reopen it, I need to spend a half million dollars to reopen it. And then I'm asking myself, um, should I do that? But if I don't, I'm walking away from, you know, $1.2 million that was invested in it. But if I do, I might lose the half million dollars because I don't have an operator. I need an operator that's going to be there every day. Mm-hmm. But you know, like w- when when you're not there, you know we after COVID and all business owners could testify to this after COVID, and we're only two years out of COVID, right? And it was mm-hmm. actually was still going on, to be honest with you. But you couldn't really get qualified people to work certain position because everybody had some PPP check or some. Long Everybody was getting the PPP check. They was getting the unemployment. Unemployment, yeah, years. all of that. They yeah, all getting, of that. You know, the stimulus. Like everybody had like a windfall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the people that was in position to get that, you know, like you know us, we we got the money. We was on the Gucci line, the Dior line, the 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 all all the hot. Sh- labor line was on them lines and nobody wanted to work so you know you have a business that you have to operate and you know like nine out of ten of the people that you hired weren't even people that you definitely even looked at twice but you needed to full position and and i filled it with a lot of people that was just not good people but but we needed to fill the position and when when i'm not around them niggas had them people anybody that had to pay and it wasn't using a debit card or a credit card that there was paying cash some niggas were reserve it use manager code to delete it ask customers to cash app them if they're paying cash they'll get a discount them baltimore motherfuckers run amok (laughs) to be honest with you you know what i'm saying and and we see it the system will show all you know and the managers just like the 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 manager that I brought up from North Carolina to come up there to save it, she just was out of her element, you know, like they were bullying her on another level. So to me, I just went up there on May 25th and I said, yeah, I'm going to close this. I'm going to stop the bleeding because if I didn't close it, then Miami Beach would collapse. Mm-hmm. Then I would lost two over one. You know, so, but the owners are like, yo, you know, Peter, you really need to reconsider, you know, we would redo your lease, the whole nine yards. And I'm just getting back to being myself, to be honest with you, you know, Um, because I was myself for a long time. I didn't even know it. I, I was sabotaging everything in my life, my relationship. I was sabotaging, I was sabotaging everything in my life because I didn't care, mm-hmm. you know. And it, that put you, you in a allow, hole. Allow yourself to grieve too, you know. And I don't mm-hmm. feel like you ever had, had you ever stopped because you was like go 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 go. And no, even and after then, you lost your dad, you still go 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 go. Yeah, and sometimes that, I, you have to I, like stop it, reassess, and then you know, then yeah. move on. Yeah, now 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 um I can understand why people need you know uh, to see to seek therapists. You know what I'm saying? To talk things out. You know, I'm I'm an island boy. And we're sending people don't believe in shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I grew up, you know, like, I, I'm going to tell you when I know it hit me, right? Because, like, I never really had anybody in my family that, that I was really close to that died. My little brother died in 1975 when I was in Brooklyn. The youngest of us got hit by a car, by Ebbets Field. Boom, died on the spot. Uh, everyone in my family went down there. Uh, I didn't. Okay. Uh, my dad died. And the day when, you know, I'm the oldest boy, so I was trying to get up there to talk about my father. And I and I just fell apart where my brother and my sisters had to come up there and hold me. And my mom had to 
<laughs> you know, you can do it, Peter. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that shit was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, and I realized the other day when I went to visit my dad, because I visit him like every other month, and I'm talking to him, and I, I, the same emotion came over me, and I start bawling out there. I'm by myself. I wasn't embarrassed. I just let it go, and I'm talking to him. And I had to apologize to my dad that since my little brother died, I have never, since 1975, went to see where they buried him. Never went to his gravesite. So I'm dealing with all type of fucked up issues. <laughs> you've been holding on for all this time. Yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah. So, so one of the promises that I make that I'm making to myself is that before this year is over. I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to go to Cypress Hill where they buried him. And I'm going to go into, they got to be an office where I could go and give the name, the month, you know, uh, the year that he died. And they probably could tell me where to go locate his, uh, his, his the stone or his site that I could mm -hmm. go and really have a conversation with him. Because, yeah. you know, that's 75 until now. I've never, 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 never once visited. You know what I'm saying? I run away from stuff like that. And it, it kind of tell me that anytime, that's why I don't like to get too close to people. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I remember even when Greg, and I'm going to use that as an example because that's when I know I had some some serious fucking issues. I remember when I went to see Greg and I took Apollo with me and, and Nini was in the room and when I looked at Greg, I was looking at Greg and he looked like a little person, like a little Indian man laying in bed and I'm, I'm looking at Greg and it is Greg. It's, but he looked like a little Indian man laying in the bed and and they're like Nini's like, Peter, Greg, Peter's here, Peter's here. And he kind of look up his eyes. He can't move nothing, but his eyes hit me. And then I see, like, kind of open his eyes wide. And I held his hand, and he kind of hold on to my hand. And I was there for, like, 45 minutes holding his hands. And I'm like, oh, my God, please don't let him die while he's holding my hands. And when I walked out of there, I know that I was never going to see my friend again. You know, and... I realized that I have a serious issue of running away from things like that instead of facing it. You know, so my dad just you didn't run away per yeah. se. You were there, so yeah. how did you, you didn't run away? Because I have another friend of mine named Greg that just died two months ago, mm -hmm. and he had cancer. This guy was one of my manager on Miami Beach for one of my establishments for years, and they everybody wanted me to go see him, and I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't go, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I just, the fear of just, you know, and, and, you know, like I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm an older cat now, so you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people that I know is dying, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, um, and I'm always fucking alone. I need to be more social. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I spend more time in my fucking house by myself than being outside with others. When I'm outside with others, uh, for the last three years since my dad died, I was just knocking them back. I just keep on drinking. And all I'm doing is it. all I'm doing is numbing myself, you know what I'm saying? Uh mm -hmm. sleep late, you know, stay out night, can't sleep at night, uh, stressed out, not having solutions but create more problems. And, you know, it's, it, it put me into a situation where I'm fighting for, for, I'm fighting for so much right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. just wait. I'm just waking up, mm -hmm. you know, friends that I, that I did things for really fucked me over. And I realized that th the word friend is not something that you should use unless it's, Unless it's really people that, regardless of what's going on, don't even get me started on that. You know, I know too. Yeah, yeah, gonna be there for you. And I realized that I probably have like in six to three years being on this planet, I probably have like four people that really gives a fuck about me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Really cares about me. That don't hmm. want nothing from me. But that's all you need. That yeah, them the ones so, you need, you know what I mean? Because that's all I need. People who have a whole lot of friends don't don't really have a whole lot of friends. Yeah. 
I know everybody, but no, nobody knows me, you know? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, you know, I've just been going through some shit. So I like, I like talking to you because when I, I just like to let it, let it go, let it out. You know what I'm saying? It just, just get it out of my system. The more I talk about it, the better I feel, you know? But I still think I need to see a therapist. I really do. You do. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I, I encourage no, I encourage that because it's important because you, you need to have that, that unbiased perspective, like somebody who don't really know nothing about you that, yeah. that has a degree in all of yeah. this shit. And then they can hear hear things and kind of like give you a different perspective on how to cope and how to manage because that's our problem. And 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 I have that issue too. The older I got, the more things start to weigh on you. You yeah. start to have more responsibilities, more money, more problems, more issues, mm-hmm. more, you know, and it's like when you were younger, you didn't have all that that weight and you had to compartmentalize and try to figure mm-hmm. out how to manage this business, how to manage that business, how to do this investment. How, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it gets heavy. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I'm a single woman. I've been there. I will break down. So I, oh, I wow. definitely encourage you to, and men won't do it. You know, I know a lot of women will, but I, I, black people don't. Black, black I men won't do it. Because I feel yeah. like if you have that unbiased perspective, It'll and make think, everything seem a lot lighter. Like I, you, you come out feeling fresh. Like you got a weight yeah. off of your shoulder, and yeah. And I tell you something, you know, like, like I realized during the last three years that um, you can't really, you can't really show things to people. Mm-hmm. Because when people see you at your most vulnerable moment is who they think you are, you know, without even knowing what you're going through, you know. And uh, if I'm fucked up, I ain't going nowhere. If my pocket is fucked up, I'm not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And that's when people start taking hits at you. You can't let people know what you're going through because then for me, like, they, they will blast my ass just because they want some likes on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know what mentally I'm going through. And every time I, I could see, I, I was dating this girl and um, she didn't want nobody to know that I'm dating her. All right. And that shit bothers me. I'm like, because I like to celebrate whoever I'm with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, I, I want to be like fucking Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. They celebrate each other every fucking day. You know what I'm saying? They want the world to know. They probably have all kinds of fucking problems. But you know what I'm saying? Though That, you know, like, oh, this is my woman. You know, because, like, I, I don't date multiple people. I'm not like that if I'm, I'm one person at a time. So I want to celebrate my woman. It's like, no, don't celebrate me. I don't want nobody to know that I'm dating you. And I'm like, oh, you don't want nobody to know that I'm dating you. I was offended by that. But I just been through some shit and I realized why. I realized why. Because when they're dragging me, she don't want to get dragged on some shit that she's not even involved in. You know what I'm saying? And people are mean as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So now I really understand that perspective. I was so arrogant and ignorant to the fact that I didn't understand what she was saying. So I gave a hard time for it. All right. And when I was getting dragged in the last fucking six months, I was like, damn, I'm so glad that nobody know that me and her are cool like that. Because they would attack her too. You know what I'm saying? So it's de- very difficult to, to, to maintain when people look at you as a celebrity. I never see myself as that, as such. But, you know, uh, I'm not a celebrity. Uh, the famous because I was on you that show. Yes. You are a celebrity. You are a celebrity. I don't feel that way at all, but I tell you, you don't something. You have to feel that way, but you are. Because oh people do celebrate you and people look for you and yeah. people look at they you. Look as they look for me to are. fuck me up. They don't look for me to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> they look for me to fuck me up. They they don't don't, that's they that's all a part of being about, a celebrity, Peter. Yeah, people are going to talk bad up. about I, you. Oh my God, man. Let me tell you something. That's yeah. what I told you. Don't even respond to that mess. If you know it's not true, you ain't even got to respond. And I know a, the, what is it? A lie unchallenged becomes the truth sometimes. Mm, but uh, like at the end of the day, 
Like, don't don't even like some of that stuff. Don't even buy into it because it's like people keep trying to form the same narrative over and over and over and over and over again. As long as you know it's not true. Yeah, but why are we yeah, you know what though? I used to feel that way. I'm gonna be honest mm -hmm. with you. I thought, yeah, I, I don't give a. I, I was like, I don't give a fuck. I was the guy. I don't give a fuck what you think about me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but. We all do give a fuck about what people think about us. We give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? We do. Yeah, because you know what? I now I don't wanna now I don't wanna post my kids because people be attacking them. You know what I'm saying? See, that's the problem too with social media. We see yeah. all the negative stuff and yeah. don't see the positive stuff. And I know it's a positive comments up there, but mm -hmm. it's like we always see the negative. Try to ain't ignore the negative. Ain't nobody celebrating on positive. These motherfuckers' the lives are so fucked up that they just they're but comfortable that's, that's in the, the fact they know that your shit fucked up too. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, like, it's crazy. I, I, I it just, you know, what it makes me just bring the shutter all the way down. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get back to the place where I don't give a fuck, and I'm gonna leave the curtains open all the time. So go ahead and talk. Okay, because you're talking about me. I don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I must be doing something for the, right. For the most part, you have a thick, you have thick skin. But I know sometimes, especially like you said, when you're going through stuff, yeah. it's easy yeah. for the negativity to penetrate. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, losing your dad, going through your depression, all that. You're going to see the negative stuff because you're in a negative space. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. And it's yeah. going to hurt you more because you are already feeling the ways. So Man, I just I mean, think you and I'm a very, very, very emotional person. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I'm way too emotional. I'm the type of person to watch a movie and happy moments make me cry, sad moments make me cry. I'm on some bullshit. I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? I'm one of those. Yeah, that's the thing, too. You know, that's halfway why I stopped yeah. blogging because people don't realize that a lot of the people that we blog about are human, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They feel the same feelings we feel. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like we talk about celebrities or reality mm -hmm. show stars and all that as mm -hmm. if they don't have feelings. We're going to talk about their hair, their makeup, they this, they that, their relationship, their money problems, they, mm -hmm. you know, their tax liens and all of that. And we kind of compartmentalize that to mean, you know, no feelings. It's just a story. But people have feelings. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I look at all of that shit different now, to be honest with you. Uh, I used to say, damn, why these people always want people in their business? They say who they're dating and who they broke up with. But, you know, the reason why they tell you who they're breaking up with is because they don't want you to, they don't want to keep on dragging other people in their life. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Uh, it is absolutely crazy. I'm talking to people. I, I could relate so much more because I was like, I, you know, like I was a horse with the blinders. It was just I see the finish line. So I wasn't really paying attention to shit around me. You know what I'm saying? In the last three years of me sitting down and I'm being motivated to do shit, I'm, I'm seeing everything. I'm walking more than driving. You know what I'm saying? I'm on some crazy ass shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm, I feel like I'm getting to know me. You know, which is which is interesting because I I I feel like I I never knew who I was, you know, because I'm always going, you know. Mm -hmm. Now now, no you know, I'm I, I'm over here venting and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, I know, here. but I just feel like I just feel that good things are coming your way, man. <laughs> I feel it in my bones. It's gonna be worse before it gets better. I promise you that. Because yeah. right now, some shit's going on that I can't even talk about. But I'm I'm fighting right now. To be honest with you, you know it's crazy. You like you've been crying. Uh, Wipe your face, Jay. You got stuff like that. What? You got stuff on your face. I'm, I'm always do. I tear oh. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. yeah, right here. yeah. <laughs> you good? What's wrong with Peter? <laughs> Right, Peter been over there crying. Peter was crying with Michelle. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> if y'all only knew, <laughs> no right. I, just, I I do appreciate that. You know, you a strong one. You know, and 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 the reason I always support you is because you've always supported me. 
throughout these however many years I've been blogging 20 years damn near. yeah because and I, it's see just what, like, I see what I, see, I know what it is you know what you, you, what you know I, I I'm a, I'm a I'm an attention to detail type of person so when I look at you I actually see you you understand what I'm saying and then if I think you're an interesting person then I'm going to follow you to see if your patterns are consistent you know what I'm saying? Because you could always tell a person by how they form their words when they speak. You know what I'm saying? You could always tell a person by how consistent they are. You know, you might say something, but your pattern say something else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I think I I think I, I checked you out for a good two years before I said, let me fuck with Michelle. You know what I'm saying? Because she's consistent. You know what I'm saying? And 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 once I'm locked in and uh, and I know that you're a good soul, you know, because we need more more people with just genuine people, you know, I'm locked in. You know. You the only Remember you was, you up, you know. introduced me to um Nene and Cynthia. I knew you even, first. I didn't even. I don't even remember that. We was at a uh, bar one mm -hmm. over there, you know, in Atlanta. On Memorial, on Memorial. On Memorial Drive, yep. And um, Nene, Cynthia, and Greg was there. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I used to come up there with that, you know, the other one, all the time. Yeah, you know that, yeah, I know. It you was rent my place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you had, and, and but I was up there, I think, with Giant or something. I was, it wasn't him that day, I was with somebody else. Mm -hmm. But you introduced me to Nene because I was like, Oh, she gonna curse me out. <laughs> and you were like, She, she can't go, she cuts everybody out. <laughs> but you know, if you, I, I think me and Nene, we like, we have this thing like we love to hate each other. Well, no, let me say, not we. I think that motherfucker loves to hate me because I'm always speaking the truth to her and she can't stand that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny because my ex-wife said to me the other day, like, you know, it's funny that y'all motherfuckers never like each other. And now every time I turn around, y'all are out together. And I said, well, you know what? It's kind of strange because... You know, she ended up dating my homeboy that I was close. It's one of the closest dude I was in the five years I spent in, in Charlotte. And I didn't introduce them, but, you know, I think they found out that I was a common denominator in their life. You know, um, and every time... I keep time, telling people y'all, you didn't introduce them. I don't know why people don't believe me. I, I, did, I, did, not, I did not introduce them. I wasn't even there. Uh, well, when I found out they were dating, I, I uh, kind of, you know, because I, I just clicked back to Greg, say, you know, like, look out for my wife. That's part of the last words that he said to me. And I'm like, that more crazy motherfucker don't listen to nobody. That's what I said to him. The last word I said to him, and he gave me a smile before I walked away. And I'm like, I, I know Yanni to be a dope dude. You know what I'm saying? All right, but he also liked the camera. You know what I'm saying? He's a fashion guy. Uh -huh. You know? All right. And he he does all my custom all my custom suits and shirts. You know what I'm saying? But he's I he's I feel about him somewhat the same way I feel about you. He's a really consistent person. You know what I'm saying? He has a good good soul. You know, like uh I I known both of them. I think they, knowing both of them, I think they need each other. You know what I'm saying? But I think them motherfuckers make each other crazy too. You know what I'm saying? Because he come and he sleep on my fucking couch all the time. Anytime he go to my house, he's spilling too much couch. tea, man. Don't be spilling too much. Every time he sleep on my couch, I know them niggas are cussing each other out. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like as a friend, you don't get involved because I'm friends with both of them. All right? So I don't have nothing bad to say about Nini because I love her to death. You know what I'm saying? And then I would call him and I'd say, yo, where you at? We're going to MCK. He's like, no, I'm with my wife. I'm like, motherfucker, you can't stand it. Yesterday. You know what I'm, I'm plugging MCK, right? That's where the grown-up okay. goes. Okay, I right? love MCK. I love it. I was yeah. there the other day. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a grown-up spot. Uh, you know, I just... Don't be telling this. everybody. Not everybody going to be there. Yeah, I know, but, you know, everybody can not get in, though. There you go. <laughs> It's not for everybody. 
they be turning people away. I uh, yeah, I think people. Uh, it's not that the, the the guys who own it they're so dope. Or it's three strong black dudes. I love them motherfuckers. But it's not that they turn people away. Is that when you go in there, you don't belong in there. You're gonna be uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna leave. Oh. You know because you're not going to MCK to hear your favorite songs because they don't do that shit. You're not uh -huh. going to MCK to go watch a game because there's no TV in there. So uh -huh. if you don't have no social skills and you not like minded, your ass is gonna walk out of there five minutes after you walk in. And not everybody looking at MCK. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You're gonna walk out of that bitch because you're gonna know you don't belong. You know what I'm saying? Go somewhere else, nigga, where they can't see you. Because you're going to be exposing that motherfucker. MCK is amazing. I love MCK. Yeah. Anyway. I can't the wait to open my shit back here. Yo, people, I am coming back. Bar one got to be in Atlanta. Okay? Uh -huh. We gave I'm... up hope, child. We've been waiting. Nah, nah, I know I'm the most amazing. I was waiting for my little section that had the ATL in your section up there so yeah, I could sit yo, up there. Yo, and I can't wait to give you your little section because I tell you something. Um, there's nothing like bar one in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I bring it back, I know I'm going to be winning. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to put it out there. I'm, I'm going to do a pub, public uh, uh, fundraiser for bar one ATL. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be really they're gonna drag. Go put a yeah, GoFundMe up. They're, they're, drag gonna, they're, gonna drag, they're gonna drag my <laughs> ass over that one. No, nah, I would never do that because I know I fucked up y'all are. So I would never do that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get it done. <laughs> we I'm know it. it done. Yeah, we know it. Anyway, you uh, you want to talk to the people? Or are you good? Yeah, I, I don't mind. I mean, a lot of them want to. Yeah, I'm ready to cuss somebody out. Come on, bring it. I put the link in there. I don't know if they're going to call in, child. Y'all want to call in, talk to Peter, talk about whatever. We was actually talking about Nene's new YouTube channel. Okay. I don't know. Peter, Peter might was, get a YouTube I was, channel. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen it. You know, I know that she had did uh, Carlos King um, two parts, and I knew and that. And then she Carlos... did Bethany two parts. I Bethany Franklin. I haven't seen Bethany. Uh, and I didn't see Carlos King either, but I, I People were talking about it, and I know that he had over a million views. He did, on his and his channel—that's a lot of fucking people. And you know, I keep on telling that crazy ass did the same shit when she was on The Apprentice or with Donald Trump before this motherfucking ran for president. Um, and when she had walked off that time, a million mm -hmm. people didn't watch the show the following week. What do you feel about the ratings being so low? Like, they couldn't even hit a million people for who? That one time this season, season fifteen. For none uh, of the uh, like, uh, they was uh, like in the five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand range. Wow, you know what? When I was on the show, I used to go to um to that site where you could see where you rank uh mm -hmm. on on Sundays. And, yeah, and um, in reality show, we were ranked number one for like eight years mm. running, right? Every Sunday, um, trending number one, yeah, number yeah, one. Yeah, and the only show that was bigger than us, and they were way bigger than us, is that Walking Dead shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, and I used to see, they used to put how many people tune in, you know, so you could see like it like a 2.8 or 3.5 or you know what i'm saying you see the numbers million people that tune in and then they'll then the reruns that came on later on at night you would see one point something so whoever missed it you know by the end of the night we used to average over four million people that watch us every sunday you mm -hmm. know so so when i'm hearing that we're not even doing five hundred thousand, and uh a lot of people don't know exactly how these people make their money but it's not hbo cinemax or showtime where a subscription base okay bravo is set up where it's advertisement base so when you start doing five hundred thousand, you're losing money like crazy so they're gonna, to tell them. You, they're gonna have to retool that motherfucker 
You know what I'm because saying? Because when I was reporting on the ratings throughout the season, yeah. everybody was like, well, they stream. Everybody watching on That's streaming. So cool they stream on Peacock. But it's the same thing that the actors and the, yeah. the uh, music That's artists on are protesting. On Where's the streaming money? They don't make no yeah. money streaming. Yeah. Well, they don't make no money, period. And all that streaming shit is just another way to not give you the information because you really don't have the information. Where Nielsen, Nielsen ratings, you have the information because those boxes are in people's homes. So and they the could demographics tell you, and exa everything. Exactly. They could tell you who's watching, how many black people watch, how many white people watch. They know that shit. So, you know, and, and Bravo um, is more um, Procter & Gamble than advertisers than you would said uh vh1 or bt or we you know what i'm saying bravo is up here when the rest of them is down here so they mm -hmm. get premium for that but you know you 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 will see a tide commercial mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you see a, a cadillac commercial you see those type of shit they're selling it to grown people you know what i'm saying generational shit all right so when you're not in those numbers the you can't charge them rates anymore so they're losing money like crazy. They're gonna. I mean, what to... do you think about the 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 rumors of a reboot, an all cast reboot? You that's think not, they might that's not a rumor. That's a that's a must. And you know what's so fucking crazy about that old franchise? And and it's not. You 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 might say Potomac did great. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, or um, I heard they got Dallas. They got New York reboot. They got Jersey. They got. Orange County, they got Beverly Hills, they got all of these. Do you know what they used to threaten everybody that, you know, like every year you have to wait until after reunion to see if they're going to bring you back? And I, I keep on telling the girls, they're bluffing like a motherfucker because this is a soap opera and people are invested in each character and they cannot afford to bring back certain character that's popular because the ratings are going to drop, the advertisement's going to drop, they're fucking themselves. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And everybody was nervous. I said, don't y'all understand business? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now, uh, why do you think they went and got Sheree back? Because they need an old school back. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I could mix it up. I was happy when they got Sheree back, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. I always wanted to see her shine. But mm -hmm. Kenya, Kenya and, and Candy can't hold that show. They yeah, can't. you know what that's I'm what saying? I said. Either one of them or both of them gotta go, cause they gotta split them up. They can't. To be honest with you, they can't. They can't afford to let either one of them go. Mm. Okay, because them the candy's gonna be candy. Uh, she's fucking indigenous as fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they pay. Yeah. But those are the two highest paid people. It and they're not bringing it, it with they, with their storylines. It, it doesn't matter. They're gonna have to surround them with people that's gonna that's not afraid to mix it up with them. Okay, mm -hmm. but they can't get rid of those two people. They cannot. You don't think so? They cannot get rid of those two people. If they get rid of those people, that the fear of it collapsing will not let them get rid of those two people. Okay. Because you can't be number one for 10 years. But it had they already collapsed? No, no, it could get worse. <laughs> it could get <laughs> worse. And, and guess what? They can't drop it. They could suspend it like mm -hmm. they did Miami. You know what I'm saying? And then uh -huh. they when, when they could retool it, they suspend it. Uh, and, and then you won't hear about it for like, Two or three seasons. Well, that's what but, I heard they're gonna do. They're gonna suspend but, it. Like it's yeah. gonna be a long time before they they start filming for season sixteen. That's yeah, they I could heard. suspend it and put everybody put the whole budget on hold, right? Okay, mm -hmm. but guess what? This is the PR part that's a nightmare for them because it was number one for ten years. Mm -hmm. It now looked like the franchise across the board is failing, mm. and they cannot afford that. So those decisions that those executives have to make at, at Bravo, mm -hmm. it's crazy because if you make the wrong, I would not want to be them because if they make the wrong decision, they're fired. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So they're going to have to bring those two girls back, but they're going to beef it up with, with they're going to have to get some people that's not afraid to mix it up with them. And they need to bring people. They need. They actually need to spend some money and bring some people that that have a fan base. Mm 
They're mm -hmm. like real celebrities. Mm -hmm. That's what Beverly Hills did when when it was failing. They went and got yeah. some some celebrities to come on that shit to save it. Mm -hmm. That's you true. Yeah. Hey, hey Dr. Love. How you doing? Hey, Michelle. Hey, Peter. Hey, how you doing, Sula? Hey, I'm Hello? doing good. I'm doing good. I was just listening to you guys pretty much saying what you saying is true, Peter. They just can't dump those two girls. They have to bring somebody around them that's better than them and phase them out. You that's got what it. they have to do. You got it. That's the only way they could win. But don't yeah. they always cut from the top, though? Because everybody, like, you kept saying, like, they can't get rid of Nene. They can't get rid of Nene. Nene gone. And so no, no, I feel no. like they one, can't one, get rid of Candy. They can't yeah, get rid one, of... One second. They didn't get rid of Nene. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, she walked. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. They're, they're not dumb. They didn't get rid of Nene. And they'd allow her when she was doing, uh, you know, uh, regular, you know, when she was doing those regular TV shows on the ABC or, or one of them channels, they allow her to go and soar because mm -hmm. her soaring at a higher platform make that day platform like bigger. Or higher. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. but, but, but when she mixed it up with them, hey, you know, uh, I'll, yeah, I can't tell nobody what to do. You def nobody definitely can't tell her what to do. But, you know, like, uh, th there's... <laughs> let me shut up because me and that nigga would be fighting tomorrow all day long. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, but, watch your words, Peter. Yeah, yeah, watch your yeah, words. Yeah, you know, you, listen, let me tell you, I'm going to say this. There's no black person on the planet that control distribution. So if you want your shit to be distributed and you know who's controlling the distribution, don't say the wrong fucking shit to upset the distributor. Because if you do, they might take it out on you and say, you know what, we're not going to distribute this shit. Let's so push that other shit So should you just be quiet and take the abuse? Is that what you're saying, Peter? Uh, no, I'm not saying that. I don't believe that at all. I, that's one of the reasons why I love her. You know but what you know because, what, Peter? Yeah. Pay, pay attention. They suffering too. Big time. Like, because the, what we're talking more about, than she is, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. So yeah. why why yeah. allow yourself as a network to suffer the way that you are instead of, you know, um, amending, just making amendment amendments with her because you at 200,000 at that point, you got to reboot. You almost your platform is almost gone. So yeah. he they needs to bring. Back Nija, I mean not Nija, Nini, and mm -hmm. um, what's the other one? Um, Portia. Portia. And, oh, and oh, they, yo, listen, listen now. If they, yo, let's talk about fire. If they bring back Portia, uh huh. Yo, let it's me a whole new ball game. Yo, let me <laughs> let me tell you something, and I hope Portia is listening to this, right? Because <laughs> uh, you know, like. Por Portia, <laughs> I'm gonna say some shit, bro. Yo, you can't even be honest nowadays because when you're honest nowadays, everybody want to fuck you up. Okay, <laughs> but but if they went out and bring Portia back, because Portia made some moves, right? So if uh -huh. they went out and get Portia, because to me, Portia is great fucking TV. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Right. So if they went and got Portia with that husband that Portia got, uh -huh. that motherfucker would be something I would watch. Right. I haven't right. watched that show in fucking five years. Okay. <laughs> but right. that's something that I would tune in to watch every week to see how fucking. Um, uh, What's Simon, going on with Portia and Simon? Simon and Portia, how they gonna flow? Cause them, them two motherfuckers. I, I watch them on social media, right? Right. Okay. Uh -huh. And from the wedding and and <laughs> and the kind of posts them niggas do, right. you know what I'm saying? I want to know if that shit is actually so real. Black people. Uh huh. Exactly. So you that's what, what I'm saying. saying. Portia yeah. said she want to be the highest paid housewife, and apparently Bravo said they ain't got no money. That's why I said they got to get rid of Kenya. And candy, nah, or not gonna do one that. of the they other to, they, and bring they, Portia home. The no, only they way they can do that is, is bringing Nini and Portia back. And you don't think that Nini, that Portia would come back with Nini? You don't of think that? Would. Of course, why? Right. Thank you. And I know that too is a fact. And then mm -hmm. there's you. You, like you said, Nini's dating your bestie. People want to see you too, Peter. Goodness gracious. No, I'm, I'm, you know, get their life. 
You know, I'm still trying to sell bread, so I'll make sure that I pop in and pop out of that motherfucker. Oh, well, as long as you pop. <laughs> Peter, yeah. he can't commit. Huh? What? You, you don't have to commit. Everybody no. done already said between Nene, your best friend, and you, and Portia, that's all we need. That's all we need. If that nucleus Nene, come back. Portia, Simon, and Peter. Okay. If, if that that's nucleus come right back, they, they're going to have a number show one show. On they're going to have a number one show again, and they already fucking know it. They know it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because so, yeah, our social media is hotter than the fucking show itself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, bravo needs to do what they need to do, get rid of whoever they need to get rid of, and stop mm -hmm. losing big money. Because mm -hmm. another person we want to see is your other best friend. And that Ooh. is um, what is his name? I can't, why well, I can't think of names? Um, Apollo. Yeah, uh, Apollo. Phaedra's, oh, oh well, Phaedra, ex-husband. Yeah, mm -hmm. we want to see Apollo too. Yeah, that would be uh, interesting. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> That would be interesting. But see, if you, if you get Apollo, you're going to have to get Shireen. Oh, that, that's even more interesting because I think she's... But they was the on couples retreat. I, you know, I never watch... You see, I don't watch these people. But that's really a don't. difference than Housewives. Yeah. Couples yeah. retreat yeah. is like... Uh, you know? How, how was that? I was couples retreat with them. <laughs> it was all right. It just wasn't very interesting. I mean, yeah, it was all Alan right. Was on it. All of them was on It just wasn't... Yeah, really I, I tell you something, and I think what people uh, have forgotten, right? What make that franchise successful is people that actually go on it, mm -hmm. and it's not pretentious. People that's go on it and say, you know what, this is my fucking real. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you my real, and I'm not gonna be embarrassed about my real because I'm gonna use this, okay, to get through the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people go in there and they want to sell fucking product. Ain't nobody trying to buy your product unless, they, and, unless they're buying to who you are. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You yeah, know? and then they yeah. was on there with some boring people. See, other people can bring the best out of other people. And mm -hmm. I don't think nobody was on there with them that was going to bring some stuff out of neither one of them. Because we know Apollo can get lit, you know. So it wasn't nobody on there you know, to bring out the best of the people. So you need that within, you know, a franchise or within the show. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, if they're smart and, you know, a lot of them, you know, a lot of these executives think that they, they're the smartest people. But mm -hmm. they should they should really look at what at work, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, like General Hospital is still on TV. And that shit yeah. is over damn near 50 years going. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And and exactly. and 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 we all watch them fucking characters grow up in front of our eyes. You know, I'm still looking for Luke and motherfucking Laura. Them niggas still alive. Because I'm still no. looking for them. Not <laughs> Luke and Laura. <laughs> and Erica Kane, they still yeah. out there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still looking for them people. You know what I'm saying? Them people, like, every now and then in the daytime, I'm home and I'm going through the channels and shit. I'm like, oh, shit, let me watch this. Oh, <laughs> no, you not. Oh, you oh, be watching Zero Hospital for real. No, I'm like, that nigga's still on the shit. You know what I'm saying? They've been I don't getting know paid who forever. on there. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something, man. I know they're still uh, you, you guys just said it. If if uh, they cannot, they cannot get rid of candy. And uh, I don't you, let me tell you something. That's one hustling motherfucker. I have to take <laughs> my hat off to her. You know what I'm saying? He is a hustler. Yeah. You gotta give it to him. Oh, candy is a hustling motherfucker. Oh, yeah, okay. we've seen it this year. Yeah, we've seen it this year because they was going to get rid of her and she doubled I think, down. I think they still back. might. Well, uh, because yeah. if, if, if she was securing her job, she would be the last quote that she said about if they think they can find somebody else, then try it. Whatever she said, like, well, because she was really you already hurt. know they can't find nobody else. Atlanta don't got that kind of people that could stand up on. And let me tell you something when I was a part of that franchise. Every year they go to around 200 different uh, female that wants to get on that show. All right. And when they, they probably pick 20 and then they probably have the camera follow 10 of them as potential housewife and the rest as friends. And I promise you at the end they had, they don't even have one. You understand what I'm saying? It's not an easy thing to do. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people think it's easy, but it's not an easy thing to do. Like, because mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of people want to do this thing for all the wrong reasons. You know what I'm saying? I know how difficult it was for Cynthia Bailey was was a print model for 20 years in, in front of in front of cameras all the time, but it's a different type of camera. You know what I'm saying? And if you're if you're not built for that shit on the inside, because it took Cynthia probably around six years to actually get it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Where where some people like like we all watched Porsche when she thought the Underground Railroad was was at the bottom <laughs> of the fucking house. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Has we all, a lot. Yeah, we mm -hmm. all watch her grow to be the person that she is today. Uh -huh. Yo, let me tell you something. She's a fucking star. Right. You understand what I'm saying? She's a star. Yeah. She's not that Porsche no more. You know what I'm saying? She's the Porsche that if I don't give a fuck what any nigga said, they she gonna have men start watching the show again. Oh, we know that, but that's you know the thing. You have hey, to you think. You sound with Porsche. Who was on Porsche's side all the time? You have to think, Nene. Nene was always riding with her, always. Yeah, that's to me. Sis. Yeah, mm -hmm. to me. Well, she. Yeah. Well, if they're smart, if if Bravo get their pride out of the way and thank you, and 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 and, 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 understand and send that. them contracts out. Yeah, yeah, and understand <laughs> that you know Nene do, do do have a voice, and Nene was right about how she was treated versus how other people were treated, and she's right. People, you know, right. but right. but as as right as she is. You know, like I, I was having a conversation not too long ago with someone that says uh, she was telling me about Bethany and uh, and uh, Nini, and I said, uh, you know, like, you know, both of them wanted to cling on to the the same complaint that they have with the network, right? Okay, mm -hmm. but the difference is uh, is that. Um, uh, Bethany have a 400 years head start on fucking Nene. She's white. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Well, Nene you know? said that yeah. in her own nice little way in the yeah. interview. She did yeah. say it. When I she didn't said, say, I didn't see you what have she more said. than I do. That's what she meant. You yeah, she said, do you think sometime. you're privileged? And Bethany admitted, she was like, yeah, I think I'm privileged. Right. Like, she is. Yeah. But and, and Bethany will say that shit too. That's what I love about Bethany. Bethany, they gave her a talk show. It didn't work. You know, Bethany is not stopping anything. She she sold that company for over a hundred million dollars, and out of that, I'm quite sure she got around twenty stacks somewhere. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like she, she she ain't in need. You know, I mean like Nene was on the show consistently for like twelve seasons, right, or around that. Okay, and and we all, I, well, I know what she was making. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like you know, when you t when you take the gov when the, when the government take their piece and and the lawyer take their piece and and you have a lifestyle to live and all of that shit there's not that much left over you right. know what i'm saying so so as as much as bravo need nini nini need bravo yeah you know what i'm saying and they it's should a just two way work it out. street they should it's work a it two out way street and we know that yeah. but yeah. bravo is the one that seems like they don't want to know that they well, don't want to up right it. now they're yeah. completely fucked up right now, so they oh, need yeah. to go reach back out to Nini and say, "You know what? We fucked up." Right. They, yeah, we owe you. We owe you some money. Go. Could you come back home? Yeah. Right. You know they saying? need to do like yeah. they need to do like Netflix done with our girl. Mm -hmm. Come on, here, here's your check. Yeah. We, yeah. we sorry, even mm -hmm. though she read them to the heels. We okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we shall see. Well, well, thank you, Doctor Love. I appreciate okay. you bringing. All right, you see you. Oh, and Peter, you make sure you go and get a therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist. I do, I do, I do need that. Mm -hmm. it, and and don't be scared because all you're doing is talking. I won't. Man, I won't it's talk. negative about it. Don't be ashamed. It's to nothing. It. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, shit, I probably cry the whole fucking time, but I'm gonna <laughs> say what what it is though. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Okay, y'all have a good night. And Michelle, you do the same because okay. you know we know about the sofa. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. You telling everybody? She done told him about the <laughs> this that damn cheap ass sofa. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just stealing my feelings about it. Hey, Teresa. Hey, my wonderful blogger. How you doing? How are you? You look so lovely tonight. And you know, Thank I'm so glad to be on here tonight with Peter. He's always been my favorite. 
Oh, oh wow! Stop. Thank you. Girl, Look, PD, you is a celebrity. The, the women <laughs> love this. And I want you to know something. I heard you say you was not a star. Yes, you are. You are a star. I, I, I looked at the Real Housewives of Atlanta faithfully. I run home from church. I'm telling you, I've been a faithful fan. And I know the back stories, the front stories. And I remember it was a segment where the men were talking. Mm -hmm. And y'all were giving y'all spill on relationship and stuff like that. And I really respect you the way you talk about your woman, how to treat the woman and everything. And, you know, I, kudos to you. I like that about you. But I want you to know I'm praying for you. I heard you tonight. I almost got in tears hearing about your father and your brother. You need to really yeah, seek after someone to help you through that. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I'm going to give you this short story. Uh, um, Tracy, you know Tracy Morning, uh, Michelle? Alonzo, yes. Alonzo Morning, ex-wife, right? Uh -huh. They were married forever. So I was in Martha's Vineyard. I got uh, called up there again the second year by my uh, one of my attorneys. Her name is Wendy Cradle, one of my long, good friends. And, you know, she knows that I'm hurting in so many ways because she knows me. So she's like, Peter, come up to Martha's Vineyard. You know? Come in, come hang out with us. And I'm up there, and I ran into uh, Tracy, and Tracy looked at me, and she said she wrote down a phone number, and she said, I need you to call into this number. Okay, uh, it comes on on Wednesday morning. I need you to call into this number. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot you a text. I'm gonna remind you, Peter. Remind you, Peter. And I'm like, what the fuck is Tracy on? You know. And then I'm then I'm I'm around Tracy for two. I know Tracy for like damn near 25 years. But the two days that I was up in Martha's Vineyard with her, I, I seen Tracy differently. And I'm like, damn, this good. This woman is so regal, so regal, so dope. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I keep on running the tour in, 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 in two days, probably like seven times. And then she she looked at me and she gave, she said, I'm going to remind you, Peter. And, uh, you know, we went our separate, actually, we, I left her uh, in Marshall Vineyard and I came to Atlanta. And at the Invest Fest, I ran into her again for another two days. All right. Mm -hmm. Dropped her off at her friend's house, the whole nine yards. And then she reminded me about this Wednesday morning meeting. And so I, I called in because she actually waked me up to make sure that I get on the call. Mm -hmm. And it was uh it was like a Bible lesson thing on Wednesday morning, right? And it's and it's and and when I got on it, oh my God, like oh my God, I bawled the whole time and yeah. there was, well, and there was grown <laughs> men on it. The subject point was so dope. The grown man on it was calling and crying and telling these stories and and I was just like I, I was weak, you know what I'm saying? And 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 it was it, it was it, it was orchestra by a friend of mine. His name is Curtis Martin. He was a running back for the New York Jets, Curtis Martin. And I didn't even know Curtis was, he was always a quiet, he moved silent. You know, I, I remember, you know, like being friends with him back in, in, in the early 90s and and going to his apartment and, you know, like uh, that he had in Miami when, you know, Curtis had money. So he had a beautiful place and it was about him and his mom and he was just a really fucking nice guy. So I was so pleased. And at the end of it, when the, your, 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 your phone is on mute and at the end of it, you know, they, they, telling people if they want to say something. And I never want to say something. I'm the person that would sit in the classroom and don't say shit or sit in church and want to testify, but I won't. But because nobody could see me, mm -hmm. I said, hey, Curtis, hey, Curtis. And people would talk and say, hey, Curtis, and say, hey. And I said, this is Peter Thomas. And I said, oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Peter, I haven't seen you forever. I, oh, my God, I'm so glad you're on this call. And I start talking to Curtis, and I start talking about uh, my dad, and I just broke down, yo. It was f crazy. So now that that Bible, now Tracy and and um, Tracy Morning and Curtis sending me the link on wow. Wednesdays for me to call in just for me to hear what mm. they're talking about, that man. So I'm telling you, it have helped me so much. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm That's saying? That's good. That's good. Yeah. You gotta, so sensitive. I'm glad you had that outlet. He's yeah. so sensitive, Michelle. Didn't you see when he was talking to you? He got tears in his coming down. I yeah. see that. Peter been sensitive. Y'all just now seeing this side of him. 
Peter, but look, before Peter, I he, he, Peter's a scammer. Peter's stealing people money. Peter oh, got all no. these women and taking the women's oh, money. My God. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm well, not. Peter, I'm none before of those I get people. thrown up, I gotta ask this. I yeah. got to ask this. Yeah. What's Wipe that? Your eyes, honey. Look. <laughs> Don't cry. I know, I know you might end up cussing me out, but <laughs> but Peter, yeah. have you not considered going back to Cynthia? No, oh. no, not at all. <laughs> no, there's a time and place for everything, and Cynthia and I have our time and our our place. And actually, Cynthia is a big, big. Big support of everything that I do. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I, every time, you know, like for when I, when we, when, when, when we separated, we separated, I, I remember dates. Uh, um, March, what is it? March, yeah, March 9th. Okay, when, when I left my home and I said, hey, because I don't think nothing's going to happen between us, I am never coming back. I have actually never went back. And that's wow. was March 9, 2016. I've never went back. Bravo didn't even know I was gone for at least uh, two seasons. And when they mm -hmm. found out, they brought the camera to, to Charlotte to shoot in both locations up there. All right. Um, and and I blocked her when I walked out of the house. I blocked her on all social media because I didn't wow. know what she was doing for five years. So uh, I think beginning the last year, we we start being cordial with each other, and I had to cuss her out. And she was crying too. I cussed her out. She was crying. I, I felt sick. Sure. Yeah, because you know, like we had made um, we had made um, a decision that we. We're never going to be ratchet. We're never going to throw each other under the bus. Yeah, yeah. We're going to respect each other, right? And um, and, and what I said to Cynthia, she's going to blow me up tomorrow because I know she's going to hear about this. She's like, I said, Cynthia, when when you were suing me for the property downtown, oh yeah, okay, um, I, I was so I was so offended because you had my number. You could have called me, all right, but you didn't call me, and you don't know I was in the middle of a major deal, all right, and that deal fell apart because the people are saying, "Damn, if you only pay his ex wife back the money he or, then why would we fucking put millions of dollars into uh, seven bar once? You understand what I'm saying? So that should collapse for me, and I said, and you're suing me for something that. It's not even yours. That shit is mine. You know what I'm saying? Because, and I said to her, when we was going through our divorce, you know, my lawyer, of course, you know, I mean, with the with the money that that you know, like the the woman get paid on Bravo, because they, you know, that those white people know what they're doing. They 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 put the money into the woman hand, and then the woman have all the control over the money, and and then the guys after death, they're like, yo, so what's up? They don't pay us nothing, but we have to show up. You know, um, uh, it, it was kind of fucked up because when we got the property, we had brought the property together, and during the divorce, I kept the property, and I said I won't take no money from you because that's your money, and I wouldn't buy my, my business. So coming back, uh, when and that's before we got a divorce, but, but coming back when I have the property and now you're saying, hey, but remember you had said that you was going to give me this back? And I said, yeah, then you should have called me, and I would have said, yo, Cynthia, you know, I left $5 million on the table. So why are you trying to get a property that's one hundred and sixty thousand dollars? That don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? So uh, and if you had called me and we talk about it, but your lawyer put it out there, and of course the people downtown Atlanta at City Hall, they see that shit. They call in TMZ and sell that story. And before you know it, it fucked up my deal, okay? And you hurt me. You know what I'm saying? And she didn't realize that all of that happened because you know she's moving on to other things. And she started bawling on the phone, and I felt so bad. You know what I'm saying? I know, but it's cool. Because we're cool. I know it wasn't intentional. So me and Cynthia is cool as fuck. You know, like, uh, we talk at least once a month. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of it is that thing I told you about, the whole social media thing. Like, people yeah. take a little bit and run with the big stuff and 
mm-hmm. not even get into the minutia or the facts of the situation. You know what I yeah. mean? Like people get a clickbaity as headline. Peter stole a hundred thousand dollars from Cynthia instead yeah. of being, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You're right. Well, look, I'm going to conclude with my little stuff because I did want to say something. Uh, Kenya, I, I love Kenya, but Kenya ain't had a real man in her life, y'all. Come on. Let's keep it 100 now. Now you can say what you want. I've been watching this child. She done prop man up. She done went with Paolo, tried to get. Come on. Let's do this math on this. Kenya is good TV, but Kenya need chicken go. She okay. walk right out the door. She Put has pulled a lot of stunts, Peter. That's it's what I heard. Out like, I was it. done with her this People season her. after she did. Yeah. She pulled that hair stunt. She had that damn party at that yeah. uh in them apartments, and it and she didn't even open no hair spa yet. Yeah, didn't you know about that? Performery. She's so performery. No, and not on that, Michelle. Look at every man. Go back from even the man she married, still married to him. Everybody been divorced, married twice. Come on, she's still getting a divorce. And but they former, never really lived again. Yeah, okay. it's time out for that. Don't make good TV. That it doesn't make good TV. And anybody got common sense is ready for her to go. Let's go. Bring me somebody that got a real relationship. Let me see them fighting in the kitchen or something. I don't want this. I can't deal with this. No more. Candy, and you know how I feel about Candy. Candy is a hustler. The only thing can keep me watching her because she's a good hustler. She's trifling as all get out when it comes to that sexual thing. Now, come on. Y'all know that, too. She love that little nasty stuff. You know Wendy Williams called her that. What she called her? Katie is doing a dungeon. What are you saying? <laughs> Katie is doing a dungeon. Yeah, Wendy Williams called her filthy, but I'm not saying that. Wendy did call her too. filthy. But yeah, okay. I'm going to hold on to Candy because Candy is a hustler. But that Kenya, you can give her pass tonight, and I promise you. The beat are gone, but I'm gonna tell you who can hold that, can bring that that empire back. Standing is Nene and Portia right now. It'll blow mm-hmm. up like the Goodyear Trade Center right now. Ooh, you're right. We we'll, we'll, we'll agree with you on that. Nene and and Portia come back on the scene. The views will turn overnight. I don't even drink, Peter, but guess what? I was gonna come to Nene's bar. I was coming to your place. That was two of my things. I wanted to come and eat. You still go to Miami. Yeah, I wanted to come just to experience eating at your place. And I even told Michelle, then I said, I'm going to come to Atlanta just to come to Needy's Bar. You know, because you you look at TV and you see these people, you know, I may not know you in person, but you get to engage with them so much. You'd be like, dang, I want to see, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And so so I'm, I'm too invested in this. Uh, uh, Bravo, Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I know who need to come and go. Kenya has been full of buffoonery. I, I think since I've been watching, she's good. Now she's she's a good liar. She's everything. You know she can get she can get you caught up. You know what I'm saying? But Kenya yeah. has not produced something good. But that little baby. Yeah, but uh, I'll tell you something. But uh, yeah, you just said some. You just said a key thing there, right there. She haven't she haven't produced anything. Well, I can't say that because I can't speak on it because I don't watch a show like a that. Beautiful child. But, but yeah. yeah, but she had a, you know like we all watched her when she wanted to yeah. have a child. We all watched mm-hmm. her when she wanted to have a husband. Yeah. And now she have a child, and that's such that's her child, that's, and that's, that's beautiful, beautiful, right? Baby too. Yeah, but but we have to we have, we also want to see what the how she's going to evolve, how she's going to grow. You know what I'm saying? I know how she's going to grow, Peter. Yeah, yeah, out but- the door. Let her go to another network. Mm. I love her. Don't get me wrong. Let her grow on another network. Because <laughs> I didn't appreciate, <laughs> how, she, I didn't appreciate how she came after my girl when she was uh, coming right behind Nene trying to get clout chasing with that Carlos King after Nene did that interview. I heard what she said. Oh, yeah. Oh. She got foreclosed on the plate. Uh, oh, yeah. The house she built the house, but it was foreclosed that on. Was that was not nice. That place. was not nice. Never forget the people that got you established. And just like Andy, he only reaping what he sowed. Because you know why? You can't keep doing a person wrong and don't think it ain't going to come back on you. So Ooh. that's why it's sinking. All you got to do is call that girl and say, look, let's let's come together at the table and talk. And I guarantee you all I, actually, you. actually, that's not even his call. He doesn't have nothing to do with that. Well, he might need to get the Bravo or whoever needs to come. Yeah, yeah, he's the executive at Bravo. Those people have to make that and call. And why you ain't back on that? 
Because I'm not, a, I'm not a housewife. I was. You I was don't have to be a housewife. Just go on and talk to. He ain't that. connected to no woman on that either. <laughs> you remember what I said? He can go. He can go marry. He can go marry Kenya. I'm wrong with what I said. I said you ain't got to be a housewife. Just talk to one of them women on that. Let's go talk to one of them, right? Yeah, you let me go holler at one of them, yo. Cause everybody else laugh. Yo, you go tell them y'all want to keep that check. Come and fuck with me. Go, oh, go, Sheree. Sheree did it with with that man from Love and Hip Hop. Mary, go, go. Yeah, they fine. Go hang out with uh. That was Huntsville. Huntsville. You cool with Sheree? Markel. Markel Hope. Oh wow, wow, wow! I actually, I actually saw Martel at at, at Sheree's house. Uh, yeah. she say they broke up now. Oh wow. Say you had too much stuff. So there, there, there's your turn, Peter. You go hook up with Sheree. He don't hey, want no Sheree. The new, the new Peter don't want no Sheree. No, that's know. that's my friend. It would never be more than that. Yeah, that Sheree and him ain't ain't together. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, right. they ain't gotta do it for real. No, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't do nothing for fake. <laughs> okay, now, fine. My, Milo is a little too tough too. I'm gonna be honest. I love me some Milo, but Milo is a gangster. Yeah, I like her for that reason. She's gangsta, boy. I'm telling you, she just got. But but if she if she would really show who the real Marlo is, the show would be bigger. I think Whoa. so. Too. Oh, really? Yeah, if she if, if she show who she really is, that show would be five times bigger. M Marlo feel like she has to dummy herself down. Okay, for Bravo to accept her. Wait, wait, uh -huh. boy. You know that show well. Yeah. Why is it Kenya? Dislike Marlo so much <laughs> because Kenya Kenya Hope, yo, Marlo. yo, but because Kenya knows when somebody when somebody cut her and they cut her all the way to the white meat, she never forgets it. Oh, okay. And someone's okay. like, this girl will not talk to that girl right for nothing in the world. They say, who is the real Marlo, Peter? Oh, what that is nigga, she not showing us? That nigga is, yo, that nigga is from Tampa. She from St. Pete. <laughs> See, oh, that nigga, so he's that nigga crazy as fuck. I love her for that reason. You know what I'm saying? Yo, if, yo, listen, if she could put her words together, because I watch, uh, somebody had told me about this uh, episode where, where Eva read her on a, on, uh, on, on, yeah, on the bus. Place. Yeah, on the bus, right? Yeah. And I watched that and I'm like, God damn. You remember when when Portia really didn't know how to react like that, so she just wanted to bust your ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's Marla times ten. You know what I'm saying? All right, and for that reason, she know that if she if 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 she comes out of pocket like that, Bravo don't don't really appreciate shit like that because oh. the their advertisers won't tolerate it. They they would definitely fire you behind. Oh, she has to jam herself down. Yeah. Yeah, so she's going to have to really go and, and figure out how to articulate on, on a level where you could cut somebody out intelligently, real deep, okay, all right, without uh, busting a grape. But see, you that's what, what she did. Like, at the beginning of this season, you saw how she was all rah-rah with Candy and Andrew and them. But then she backed up off of everybody. I feel like executive must have told her she needed to, like, yeah, yeah but you know, because they boxed her out for years. She wanted to be on the show for at least three, four years, and it just made her a person that would dip in and dip out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I was glad when they definitely made her a housewife because I think she's great TV. She deserved it. Yeah, yeah, she deserved it. You know what I'm saying? But she has to figure out how to to elevate to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and, and be better than than what she currently is. It's like I would tell you guys, if you if if Cynthia Bailey showed the Muscle Shores Alabama Cynthia Bailey, that show would have been a smash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she never uh -huh. showed a person that would cuss me the fuck out. She never showed uh -huh. that person. So Don't everybody was tough. What? None of them, none of them. Cynthia is a whole said, different None of them yeah. can hold a candle to her. Nene tried to tell y'all that too. Cynthia is a whole different None of them. Yeah. Trust me when I say none of them could compete with her on that level. None of them. Okay? But she will <laughs> never, ever, ever show that side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you and kidding it, me? And it's good because nobody really needs to see her like that, to be honest with you, because <laughs> it, does, it doesn't make any sense the way she looks and the way she cusses, two different things. You see how pretty she is? 
Yeah. When she cuss, she's ten times uglier than that. <laughs> Phaedra like that too. Now Phaedra will curse you out. No, Phaedra was a cussing. Oh yeah, yeah, she does it intelligently though. Yeah, I don't and, know. Phaedra yeah. will. Now she's getting ready yeah, to F air this Sunday. Yeah. You know that, y'all. Uh, Phaedra's airing this Sunday. She was married I'm to what? Madison. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I yeah. just saw that couple that I loved from that show. I saw them at Tesserae uh, last week. Um, the the what is it? The Countess? What, what's what's her oh, name? Oh yeah, Contessa. Contessa. I love them. They not on there no more. They are not. No. Uh -huh. Oh my not god! This season. I, they I, got I, they 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 put them off to to take Phaedra on and somebody else. Oh wow! Uh -huh. I love that couple. They dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's rapping too. He's got a rap song. Well, Miss Moten. Okay, let me let y'all go. Look, Michelle, I just you want to sitting say, there looking how pretty this late at night. Where you going, honey? You got all that I jewelry. I am going to go to bed. My husband is in the bed. I'm going to go. You, you going to bed with all that? Yeah, honey. I've been married 37 years. <laughs> That's you do. Okay, let me get my lashes together when I go to bed. Too. <laughs> Look, Pete, I've been married 30 some years, girl. Let me get keep that shit. Yo, baby, I, yo, I want my woman to come to bed looking just like that. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to be praying for you, morning. too, okay? Yeah. I want to let you know, Pete, I'm going to be praying for you. I, I really, you touched right. my heart tonight, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, that. love you, Shell. Okay. Love you, too, friend. Yeah, okay, bye. bye. Michelle, it's twelve forty. Huh? It's twelve forty. I gotta okay. go. You well, good? Peter, it was a pleasure. Yes. Thank Are you, you good? You. Yeah, I'm good. Are I'm you good. good? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you called in tonight. I didn't think you were gonna call. Yeah, I'm gonna try to be. <laughs> All no. right. All right. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you, sweetheart. Good night. I'll take you out for a birthday dinner. All right. Please do. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Yep.